Hey guys, welcome to Talk To Me Tuesday. It's Tuesday, January 24th, 2012. First of all, and very excitingly, um, I told you guys that my family went to see the Vlogbrothers on Saturday. I told you last week that we were going to do that, and we did. They were in Austin for a book signing for John's new book, John Green's new book, uh, The Fault in Our Stars. You can see the free poster that I got at the book signing. Unfortunately, I didn't uh, get my poster till after the book signing, so my poster isn't signed, but my book is. Um, my whole family went. We enjoyed the heck out of the book signing. You can actually, um, if you go to John's blog, you can um, you can see the whole book signing. Hank sang songs, which we knew the words to mostly. There was there was a new song that we had never heard before, which was really cool. Um, so I want to show you my book. Um, this is actually my second copy of The Fault in Our Stars. I bought my first copy. I pre-ordered one. And after I pre-ordered it, I realized they were coming to Austin. But I couldn't wait to read it. And I decided after discussing it with my family that I would use the extra copy as a giveaway. So we're going to do a giveaway. But first I want to show you my copy. So this is the copy I got at the event. And you can see, it's got my name on it. Autographed, Hanklerfish, and signed by Hank as well as John. So that was really, really awesome. Um, the whole thing came with a little program, which I don't want to give too much away in case you're going to book signing later. But there is a crossword puzzle that um, John and a friend of his, I guess, did. And I didn't fill in any of mine because I people watched the whole time, which was completely awesome. While we were waiting for the for the whole thing to start, I people watched. But both of my boys, my husband and my 14-year-old son, finished this crossword puzzle. Gareth got an A-plus from Hank, and Eli got a DFTBA in his book. He's the only one of the four of us that got a DFTBA in his book from John. So that was pretty cool. So the next fangirly thing I want to talk to you about is my second... 12 for 2012 project. These, that's the project where you take one UFO for every month for the entire year of 2012 and try to finish that UFO. This project has been growing in a bag for about two and a half years now. I have all the parts I need for it. Um, I just hadn't cut it out. I had the pattern. I had the fabric. I had the t-shirts. And this is a quote for my daughter. And she's been very patient about the whole thing. Her birthday is at the end of February. So my goal is to get this finished in the next week or so. And then um, I'm going to have it professionally quilted and hopefully have it done close, at least close to her birthday. Um, the quilter I want to use, she's got about a month turnaround right now. So if I finished it before the end of January, which is now, and like if I finished it, say, by Monday, I might be able to get it back by her birthday. But even if I don't, she knows it's coming. So a week or two after her birthday would be fine. Um, anyway, so in progress, I've been cutting out parts. Um, it's been a little bit more tedious than a regular quilt because you have to prepare all of the t-shirt pieces before um, sewing on them. So let me show, what, I'll show you what I mean by prepare. So this is the front of a t-shirt, but on the back of it it has this like knit stabilizer, which what you do is you cut the t-shirt, you just basically slice the sides off and cut, cut the whole front off. And then you put the stabilizer behind the part you're going to use so that when you cut the t-shirt, the stabilizer goes all the way to the edges and that keeps the, st the sides from stretching. And this is actually a knit stabilizer. It's not like a regular interfacing where it's like sort of a papery feeling. This is, it has a different feel to it. It feels like, I don't know, almost like the inside of a jersey or something like that. It's more, um, more poly sort of feeling, but it stabilizes the t-shirt so it doesn't stretch when you sew on it. And that's the main thing. So this was actually the only t-shirt piece that I didn't um, build out to make the right size. So I'm making, this is the, this is my map that I made for the, the Shoji uh, screen, which is the pattern I'm using. Let me show you that real quick. So this is the pattern I'm using. It, it's called Shoji screen and it's by, uh, from me to you uh, patterns. And it just says from me to you. So you can find them at dianaandlaura.com. So this is Shoji screen. And I made a map so I could make notes to myself which piece goes where. And so like the some of the t-shirts weren't big enough for the panel I wanted to put them in. So what I did was, like you can tell where the t-shirt's been stabilized. 
and then I put fabric around it. This is a black, sort of a black sparkly. This piece is supposed to be 20 by 30 and a half, so I made it 20 and thir by 30 and a half. Like this piece and this piece are t-shirts. This is a t-shirt. These two are from t-shirts. And then three of these pieces are, um, so you have a solid piece of black fabric right there. That's actually going to be stenciled. My daughter's picked out two things she wants stenciled, and I'm going to stencil a third one. One of the pieces just hit the floor. I heard it. Um, anyway, so I'm going to stencil those to bring balance to the quilt so that it has Inuyasha all over. Um, she, I've done a couple of t-shirts for her over the years, and so I'm going to stencil the same thing that was stenciled on those t-shirts on her quilt. So that's in progress. I'm not trying to rush that. I've been trying to work on it maybe a half an hour to an hour a day. I have this flower notepad where I'm just basically writing what size it is and how many of those pieces I need. And I'm just cutting and stacking them up until I get enough. And as soon as I have enough, I'm putting a check mark on the flower and putting it aside and then cutting out the next pieces. I'm, I'm not doing it quite the way that they describe in the pattern because it's done out of yardage and I'm doing this completely out of t-shirts and fat quarters and remnants of other things. So I'm auditioning this red because she wants to have red sashing and where the black is since the t-shirts and the four panels. I, there is one green t-shirt but I did frame it in black but she wants to have all this sashing to be red so I have all of my red. I pulled all the red that I have and I'm going to, um, it's going to be scrappy red and all the sashing will be red and she's very excited about it. this is going to be a bed size quilt this is not even like maybe two-thirds not even two-thirds this is like this part of the quilt so this part's not up there the tops aren't up there the bottom like two-thirds isn't up or I should say bottom about third isn't up there um it's going to be a bed size quilt so it's going to be a good size and my design wall is not bed sized um so it's going to be pretty big linus was saturday and we did um get our orders filled and out to everyone we were about 60 blankets short and when that happens what we do is we just um spread out as much as we can so everybody gets some january we're pretty much always short because people were crafting for the holidays and that's just what happens um so hopefully February we'll have better numbers and we'll get everybody all the blankets they need and we won't be short for anyone because that always makes me a little sad. Um, I actually will be posting all the pictures from Saturday for on the Linus Connection blog today, which is linusconnection.blogspot.com. That's one of my other things that I volunteer for. I usually do it on the weekend, but I was too busy fangirling. And then Sunday we were working on our garage again, which we have been doing every weekend for like a month and a half. And it makes it sound like we had a hideous garage, but we didn't. We just have lived in this house for, I don't know, 12 years? Yeah, no. We've lived in this house for 13 years. Okay, so we've lived in our house for 13 years, and it's been a while since we've gone through and really cleaned out and got rid of stuff that we just don't need anymore, and that's part of it. Part of it's my kids are just getting older, and there are so many things that you just don't need anymore when they're teenagers. So we've been making lots of visits to Goodwill and recycling a ton of stuff and we've been we've put in some new shelves and we're resorting everything so that's why it's taking so long. Plus we only do it for maybe four hours on a Sunday so it's not like we're doing it you know for a 12 hour day or anything. So I'm back to work on Linus stuff again. Um, as I've mentioned many times in the past I have a two blanket a month goal I had actually, um, I went way over that last month. I did two crocheted blankets and I turned in either five or I think I turned in six tops at the work days that we did. So way over my two a month goal. But I've already got my two for this month in progress. Um, one is a, is a UFO that I found that was from probably two or three years ago where I had started making granny squares and they got buried underneath my yarn and I just didn't know they were in there. So I have a big stack of granny squares. The squares that I found were this part inside here inside this brown so this is all like variegated and browns and greens and navy blues and I have a whole stack of these and I just need to put these together and take care of all my little ends which I'm gonna tr probably do tonight um, I didn't do it last night because I was cutting out pieces for this quilt um, so I'll probably start putting that together tonight and I'll have a Linus blanket done now I started on another Linus blanket last week at my B, and this one was it's done. It started with just my bright scraps, 
And then I um, picked up some more brights at Linus on Saturday. And so this is a sideways shell, but it's a really bright and scrappy sideways shell. So I'm using like all my little bits and pieces. Like the first probably six rows was about five different balls of yarn, just teeny tiny balls of yarn. So I'm just using all my really bright scrappies. And I have, um, this was like a whole like tiny skein of yarn. And then I have, I have blue. I have a brighter yellow. I have some more, I have like a, a, a nice green, like the green, the color of my shirt, and I have more red. So I'm just gonna keep going until this is big enough and put a border on it. And this will actually be a, a baby Afghan. And that'll go to Linus next month. I have some things coming out soon that um, I'm very excited about and I can't give you details on yet, but as soon as I am able to give you details, you will have details. They will either be here on Talk To Me Tuesday or on my blog, or probably both because I tend to do both because, well, I just want you to know when I'm excited and happy and something awesome is going on. If you are a paper piece designer and you have not yet signed up for the paper piecing blog hop in April, make sure you check the description and go to the link and fill that out. Um, a question that has come up from several people, I only hand draw my patterns. Is that okay? Yes, if you hand draw your patterns, send me a scan and make sure you tell me what the scale is. So like draw an inch on your paper so I know how big that pattern is supposed to be. If you do not have a blog, I am happy to host your pattern. Um, the requirements are the same for everyone as far as the pattern goes. You need to make the pattern, design, draft, draw out the pattern. It has to be in a downloadable format. If that is not something you can do, send it to me and I will help you. Um, and you have to test your pattern. So there has to be an actual physical picture of your pattern that's like the block that you made. So if you want to sign up for that block hop and you are a designer or you feel like you would like to try at your hand at designing, this is why I made it in April. It gives you plenty of time to figure it out. Um, but let me know because the slots are filling up. We have some fantastic designers on board. We have some brand new designers on board. We have some fun bloggers on board. Um, it's going to be a great time. I think we're going to have a blast. So if you want to sign up, please, please do. And if you have any questions, just email me, sohooked at gmail.com. So, Fault in Our Stars, autograph version. Um, I want to give this guy away, but I need really good ideas as to what I need to do to give this away. Should I have a contest? Um, should you guys tell me why you need this book? Um, should you impress me with your awesomeness in order for me to give it to you? I don't know. You guys, um, give me suggestions and next week I will announce what I'm doing to give this book away and we will have a contest of some variety and I will give this autograph copy to a lucky winner. So you guys let me know how you want to do the giveaway and that's what we'll do. And I will, uh, see you guys next week. Bye.